this is what the Americans called the black-eyed bean, or the black-eyed pea, what we in Southern Africa call the cow pea, or in the local language, it's called niemba. How's it, guys? I'm Gus, the African plant hunter. I'm here in a field of cow peas to share with you this indigenous plant, which is one of the most remarkable and heavily underutilized indigenous plants in the region. So what's so special about cowpea? Well, it's called cowpea because cows... Oh, sorry, let me just give you the botanical name first. It's called Vigna unguiculata. Very closely related also to uh, Vigna subterranea, which is also somewhere in the field that I'm sitting in, which is uh, the Barbara nut. So the cowpea is called the cowpea because um, it makes a fantastic photo crop. A very high protein content in the leaves, very high protein content in the beans or the peas or the pods and uh, therefore wonderful for livestock but also wonderful for humans. So this has been consumed traditionally one of the oldest crops in the world. We know we've got archaeological evidence of this being consumed and cultivated at least 2,000 years before Christ. So it is a very 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 old one. And it's widespread across the world now, but it originates, of course, in Africa. Um, and the wonderful thing for African farmers is that it's extremely, obviously, uh, ecologically adapted to the growing conditions and very uh, low, minimal requirements for any kind of agrochemicals. This thing just grows and grows really well. So it's trifoliolate, um, as with uh, the Vigna family, um, pretty distinctive, to clear, and you can't miss these great big purple pods. Uh, they're green pods when they're uh, young and then they go purple and then they dry to a kind of a white color and then split open and then out come the peas. Uh, you can eat these green, you can eat them fresh or you can eat them dry because they're traditionally eaten dry. Uh, the protein content's around 25% which is very high for a bean. Um, but when you, as you can hear, I'm in a field near a village, so lots of background noise from the village. This is a crop, you don't tend to find it in the wild, so it comes near people's homes. So um, it is consumed, as I said, it's consumed green, but also then dry. And uh, I think the, the great market opportunity is more around the green beans. Um, of course, everyone knows it as a dry bean that you cook for a long time, but not so many people know it green. And really the underutilized food opportunity comes from the leaves. The leaves are tasty, they're traditionally eaten as a relish, uh, but they are not really known outside of Africa. And with 25% sorry 35 to 40 percent protein content astonishingly high for a leafy plant uh, that's really rare i mean that puts it right up there with superfoods that are known for their protein content moringa etc etc anyway i absolutely love to eat this they do take a long time to cook um, a few anti-nutritional factors in the raw beans that you need to get out by cooking uh, but it is a wonderful, wonderful bean, and of course it grows so easily, uh, really non-destructive on the environment, and uh, doesn't use a lot of water, and it's just a fantastic plant, and it tastes great. So that's it, guys, from me sitting here in a field of cowpeas next to a rural village, and you can hear all the sounds coming from that. Uh, I've enjoyed something, doing something a little bit different. There's plenty more if you've liked this on my YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, AfricanPlantHunter.com. Please do go and check it out. Hit subscribe, you'll never miss any of my videos again. And if you really like what I'm doing, you can support me through Patreon, patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. All right, guys, I'm going to go check out the Nemo in the, just up the field there, and I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye. Thank you.